These look so incredibly tacky, especially like on someone like me, you know. Hey guys, what's up? It's me, J Choice Tibbets. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time here, welcome to the first place. And if it's not, welcome back. So I'm doing a more fun and lighthearted video today, and I want to talk about 10 of the tacky and impractical things you can purchase from Louis Vuitton. So first let me just premise this video saying that this is all supposed to be in good fun, lighthearted. I actually used to work at Louis Vuitton and I've actually sold some of these items before. Um, you know, what your taste, your taste is your taste, but I'm just calling it how I see it and that's kind of the point of this video, just to have a little fun and to throw a little shade at some of the things that Louis Vuitton tries to get you to pay hundreds of dollars for. So let's just get started. If you see me looking down um, at my phone, it's because I have the photos on there. So let's just kind of get started with something that I actually was this close, let me tell you, this close <laughs> to buying. So before I bought my Louis Vuitton Palm Springs um, was the same time that this item came out and it is the Connected Watch Tambor, I believe it's called. And it's pretty much Louis Vuitton's version of the Apple Watch. And they had this super cool marketing campaign for it, and it was like, you had all these features, you could like connect to your calendar, you could have it um, connect to like your flight, you could like connect it to different like languages, and Louis Vuitton city guides. And I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff, and I'm like kind of a tech geek. So when it was like, oh, luxury fashion house? Tech? Super cool marketing campaign? count me in. And so I actually went to the store and I was like, I went there to go look at the Palm Springs, but I saw they had the watch and I like was trying on the watch and actually it was Jeremy who talked me off the cliff of buying it because it was actually super impractical, super expensive. It is actually, let me double check the price, $3,300 for a glorified Apple watch that probably actually had a, a lot of tech issues because I was actually thinking, looking back, like, Think about what happens if like the watch breaks or like there's some sort of like tech glitch or like you probably have to connect it to like a PC because I'm pretty sure it would be hard to connect to a Mac because like Apple is really weird about like having non-Apple devices connect with it and probably would have been just a whole all around fiasco. So yeah, that was one of the things that I was this close to getting that looking back was super impractical and also it's a little tacky like a Louis Vuitton watch. Nah, get a Rolex. On the same realm of tech is Louis Vuitton AirPods. Well, equivalent of Louis Vuitton AirPods. They're Louis Vuitton wireless headphones, and I saw them actually in another video, and I put it on there, my um, spring summer 19 preview that happened in New York that I was able to go to, and I saw them there. And this is just similar to the watch. It's like, just buy AirPods. Like, yeah, like, you can get like the cool Louis Vuitton monogram like on the side while you're like trying to look like super hypey and show off. But at the end of the day, they probably don't work as well. They're not gonna be as like connectable as an Apple product. Just buy those, save your money, buy like a nice bag or something. Another thing that is something I've, I've actually sold people when I used to work at Louis Vuitton and this came out while I was working there because it was the launch of the fragrances is the fragrance travel pouches. So what these are are cylinder shaped containers for your perfume that cost $500. Oh, this one? This one is actually great and to be honest, to be honest, like if I had like like a few hundred dollars coming in, I'd actually think about buying this because it is kind of funny and I feel like it looks like it probably would look very chic. Um, it can look chic or tacky depending on like what else you, you're wearing and like how much logo you have going on. But it is this bag holder. So pretty much what this is, is a small piece of leather that you wrap around your bag, like your um, messenger bag, not messenger, weekender bag and your rolling suitcase so that they're connected. To be honest, the amount of times I've like had my weekender and on a rolling suitcase and it's like falling off or it's like super hard to like grab both. This piece is actually very practical, but it's also $400. So like in terms of price and practicality, very unmatched. But still, if I, like here's, here's like 
by how I would justify it. Actually, Maria Dragunova said this. I love Maria Dragunova's videos. I'll link her down below. But she bought this, and she like bought it at the same time she bought her Louis Vuitton suitcase. And so in that case, yeah, just like add another four hundred dollars on because like you're already paying so much freaking money for like a suitcase. Like what's another four hundred dollars? Like, to be honest. But in terms, if you're like just kind of starting out your luxury collection or like, you're like oh I just want something Louis Vuitton so bad. Oh, this is four hundred dollars. I can afford that. Let me get it. Don't. There are way better things to spend four hundred dollars on. Here's something I feel like might cause a little bit of controversy, and I know a lot of people. These are like their intro to luxury, especially with Louis Vuitton, and it is the bracelets. So they make these like leather bracelets. I'm pretty sure they like just take the scraps from when they make the bags, and then they use it to then make these bracelets that they sell for five hundred and sixty dollars. But these little pieces of dainty jewelry are not worth the money. Let's remember, Louis Vuitton is a trunk house in its core. They do travel luggage. They also do great ready-to-wear, they do great shoes. They are not a jeweler. So let's not spend our money on their jewelry unless it's very fashion jewelry. Or you have like a very like personal connection with it and you feel like it's something you have to have. But in reality, these like leather wrapped bracelets are not worth it. Like I said, I'm almost positive that it's just the excess from like the bags when they cut things to like for the shape, they take that excess and then whatever isn't burned, they wrap it <laughs> and sell it to you for $500 in these bracelets. Don't do it. Don't do it. Another thing which I've recently been seeing a lot of different places, um, especially here on YouTube, I have a few of like the really big like luxury bloggers um, have been talking about it are these new like mink fur home pieces like the sleeping mask and the slippers. This ish is so expensive like the sleeping mask is eleven $1 hundred dollars. A fur Louis Vuitton sleeping mask. Yeah it probably feels great on your face and it like makes you feel very lush but honestly it looks real tacky. Don't buy it. It looks actually kind of Terrible, especially the slippers. I remember seeing actually a photo. I think it was like the Kardashians. Rob Kardashian got like all of the sisters the Louis Vuitton slippers, and they're actually quite ugly. Like, and also I can only imagine how gross the fur gets after like walking around in them for so long because there's fur on the outside of the entire slipper. And like I'm actually wearing slippers right now. I'm wearing arch slippers. <laughs> while I'm filming this video, and like even with these, these don't have like half the fur that looks like it's on these slippers and eye mask and these are already like the fur gets kind of gross so don't spend over a thousand dollars on Louis Vuitton fur slippers and eye mask. Moving on with more of like these like logo heavy pieces are, and this is more specifically for the guys, are the men's monogram or like checkered monogram sneakers. These look so incredibly tacky especially like on someone like me you know it looks so tacky. Like, the fact that you have, like, the monogram all over your feet, I don't think it's a great look. If, if for the woman, on the woman's side, like, the boots, like, they have, like, those chunky boots that are, like, monogram, or they have, like, some other, like, sneakers that don't actually look too tacky on, like, in the women's wear collection. They're still a little tacky, but some of, some of them I can deal with, you know what I mean? Like, some of it's, like, just a slip of monogram and it's just, like, full leather, or there's, like, a little hint to the, like, house's monogram. But these men's ones that I'm talking about, that are just pretty much, like, glorified converse with, like, Louis Vuitton monogram on them, which is actually just plastic, um, I wouldn't spend $750 on those. On the same token, in the same family, are the Louis Vuitton slides? No. Just no. Another one that actually is something else that I sold and I actually literally tell clients this if they wanted to get it, is the Louis Vuitton notebooks. So Louis Vuitton has actually really great planners and some other like ringed notebooks where it's just that you, you're buying the casing. So you're buying like this like hardcover monogram casing and then you can fill in the paper and you can get refills. That is what I'd always recommend that people get if they're looking for like kind of a planner journal and they want it like a Louis Vuitton monogram or they wanted a bit of um, that kind of like high-end luxury feel to like their planner. I always tell them to go that route. These notebooks though are, they're sewn in. The paper is sewn into them. So the thing is you're paying over $200, almost $300 for a notebook that once you've written in it, you're gonna throw away. 
you can't refill the papers or anything. So it's really like disposable. The only time I would recommend someone buy something like this, and I've actually had um, a client purchase it for this reason, is if it's like you're journaling something or like writing something in it that you're like gonna then keep forever. So like for example, this woman was pregnant and she was like wanted to journal her like days through pregnancy and she had the notebook for that and after she had like completed the notebook and like had had the baby she was gonna keep that in like the baby's kind of like baby box that's really cute i'm down for that but if you just want to journal because it's like oh it's like 300 dollars it's not that much i want to buy something louis vuitton let me buy one of the journals but you don't get the ringed one you just get this one you're gonna end up throwing it out in the future don't buy it to be honest i'm not sure what number we're on i'm not sure if maybe this is like 9 10 11. we're gonna end with a piece that i feel like a lot of people might get a little ruffled about that's why i left it to the end so the real ones who made it this far into the video thank you if you aren't subscribed already subscribe hit that button um but it is louis vuitton belts these are something that it's kind of like everyone's go-to first louis vuitton purchase and i feel like belts are like kind of in every house it's kind of that like entry into the sector i personally have never had a louis vuitton belt i think it like on, once again on people like who look like me it can look very very tacky especially guys like women it's always kind of different because like there are more ways to wear it for a guy like what you're gonna wear like blue jeans and like a louis vuitton belt and like what a white shirt it looks kind of tacky so i personally never bought it but i know it's like a very popular first piece and to be honest understated is always the better way to go these giant buckled logos first are like so 90s two they kind of give off the wrong message depending on the message you're trying to give out and three especially considering the times we're in minimal fashion is going to be taking over the world like brands like Bottega Veneta, Celine, The Row, that are very minimal, still absorbently expensive, but like the styles and the designs are very minimal. That's kind of where we're going to be going because people are going to be very hesitant to be showing such like outward displays of wealth. And you kind of saw this happen similarly in 2008. And actually there's a great video, I'll try and link it below, about like why Gucci became so big over the last few years because like before all of this craziness that happened with coronavirus and this co the coming recession, people had a lot more disposable income. So like these like loud logos and like pretty much everything that Gucci stands for was stuff that people really wanted and that's why the brand is able to like grow so much. But I'm interested to see what's gonna happen now, like what Gucci's gonna do now because it's kinda rough. Anyway, Louis Vuitton belts, they're kinda tacky. If you're gonna get a belt, keep it minimal, like understand the times that we're in. Even me with some of my Louis Vuitton purchases, that I've made in the past. Like, I'm not really wearing that much just because, like, the monogram isn't as hot as it used to be, and it can give off the wrong message. So that is the end of my little Louis Vuitton roast, and like I said in the beginning, this is no offense to anyone who likes any of these pieces. This is just, like, my personal opinion, just a lighthearted, fun video, and it's also just coming from how I like to shop for luxury and what I think about, um, because I'm not one of those people who can just, like, has so much disposable income that I can just buy whatever, like I really think about my pieces. And I feel like a lot of times people who are kind of starting luxury collections, they're wanting to buy things from different houses, sometimes look at the more inexpensive pieces and not thinking of actually the value of those particular things. Like, oh yeah, these playing cards, I can get like a free bag with it, but it's $500 for playing cards. Don't do it. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also. Follow me on Instagram at jtiritch. You can find all of my like fashion uh, unboxing and styling um, photos and videos there too. And I will see you guys on the next one.